بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم continue the explanation of the book uh, Riyad al-Salihin hadith number 6 the hadith of Sa'ad bin Abi Waqqas may Allah be pleased with him and uh, this is the last part continuing the benefits of the hadith from the benefits of this hadith is that the person seeking counsel you know Sa'ad bin Abi Waqqas was seeking the counsel with the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. So that it's from the etiquettes of seeking counsel that the matter discussed be discussed in accordance with its true nature and causes and if there are any impediments and the like. Everything related to the matter should be put forth to the person whose counsel is sought so that the matter becomes clear to him and therefore he will base his consultation and his advice in accordance with the details and that's why from this hadith Sa'ad said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam inni dhu mal I, have, I am a man of means wala yarithuni illabna a man to inherit from me except one daughter this explains the reason why Sa'id wants to back with and give from his wealth. And then he mentioned an impediment. وَلَا يَرِثُنِي إِلَّا بْنَ لِي And none to inherit from me except one daughter. Uh, or he is explaining to him that there is nothing to prevent me in accordance with Sa'id's opinion. Since I have only one daughter, so I will have a lot of means. So he is explaining that there is no the problem with this. That I give uh, plenty of my money away as a will, since I only have one daughter. This is from the side of the one, therefore, seeking the counsel. Should be clear, giving the reasons and uh, explaining whether there are impediments or there are no impediments. The, now the person sought for counsel must fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that he should not take and by emotions when giving advice because there are some people when they are asked about a certain matter for consultation and he sees that the one asking him has a tendency to a certain inclination in the matter you will find him go and advise him to do that in accordance with this person's inclination saying that I like that I be in agreement with what he sees and this is a grave error rather this is treason What's dutiful is that if someone seeks your consultation, is to say, advice in accordance with what you see to be right and beneficial, whether this is acceptable to him or not. And when you do so, indeed then you are giving advice and sincere. And you said, what's upon you what's required from you if he takes by it and thinks that it is correct then fine and if he doesn't then you free yourself from responsibility of the consultation however if you conclude from his words that he wants this and wants that then you advise him in accordance with that then this is a grave error and it's a treachery or it's a treason why? Because you may conclude something wrong in your conclusion thinking this is what he wants it, you may be wrong while well, indeed he doesn't want that so this will be a loss from two angles the first angle the angle of bad understanding the second angle is bad intention 
This is a benefit concerning the etiquettes of consultation from the side of the one seeking consultation and from the side of the one offering it. Now, here, if you look at there on the screen, you see that the Prophet ﷺ responded to Sa'ad bin Abi Waqas when he asked him, should I give two-thirds of my property in charity? He said, no. He said, no. And from this we know a benefit. That there is evidence for the person to say the word no in response. And there is nothing in that. Meaning it's not a bad etiquette to answer with no to a certain matter. So the Prophet ﷺ used the word no. And also his companions, the Prophet ﷺ companions, the Sahaba, used the word no with him, with the Prophet ﷺ. From that in the story of Jabr and his camel, when his camel was, when he was riding in his camel, his camel and he, he got, and, and the camel got tired, and the Prophet ﷺ was behind him, and this is from the way of the Prophet ﷺ, a caretaker for his ummah, he walks, in the rear, not in front, in order to see for their needs. So he came to him to help him, came to Sa'ad bin Abi Waqqas to help him, and he made dua for his camel, and, and the camel became so active. And so fast, never like before, as Sa'ad, as uh, Jabir explained in the hadith. Then the Prophet wasallam said to Jabir in that hadith, he said, Sell it to me for one awqiya, ounce of gold. Jabir said, No. Jabir said, No. So the companions, may Allah be pleased with them, used the term no, even with the Prophet alayhi salatu as in the hadith of Jabir, and the hadith of Jabir is in Sayyid al-Bukhari. This hadith and his camel, and it's a beautiful hadith for you to look for its details. It is in Sayyid al-Bukhari, uh, volume 3, and hadith number... 879 Inshallah for those who want to read the entire story So here in this hadith he uh, Jabir said no and the Prophet ﷺ did not denounce him Did not denounce him for that So this is the point of evidence from this hadith And in this hadith we are discussing Jabir asked the Prophet ﷺ, should I give Two thirds of my wealth in charity, so the Prophet ﷺ said no. So there is a, there is nothing wrong with using the word no because it is not of bad etiquette or bad manner. And many people restrain or refrain rather from saying no. That, but there is no harm actually in doing so. From the benefits of this hadith, also that it is not permissible for the sick person whose illness is feared to cause death to give away more than one third unless his hires allow that unless his hires allow that why? because the hires now have right in this wealth have right in this wealth Why have right from the moment the person became ill and became sick so falaya jews it is not permissible it is not permissible to give away more than one third because the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam 
said concerning the two thirds, no. And said concerning the half, no. And said concerning the third, he said the third and the third is too much. So therefore there is evidence here that the amount is to be less than one third. As in the saying of Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him and his father, is that people went to less than if people would go less from third to one fourth. Because the Prophet وسلم, said, الثلث والثلث كثير. The one third and the one third is too much. And from the benefits of this hadith, that under the circumstances of illness, fear to cause death, it is not permissible to donate, donate more than one third from the wealth, neither as a charity, nor in sharing for building, in sharing to build mosques, or gifts, or the like. Because it's clear from this hadith that the Prophet ﷺ prevented Sa'd to give in charity more than one third. And from this hadith is, it is, one should go to the lesser, from the third to the fourth and the fifth, and even less. And this is taken from the indication where the Prophet ﷺ said, وَالثُّلُثُ كَثِيرُ And the one-third is too much. And this was also from the saying of Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him and his father. And the back with is like the gift. So, the person should not back with of his wealth after his death more than one-third. Let it be from the third less, from the third and less. And it is better concerning the backwith that it be one fifth of the wealth. And because Abu Bakr radiallahu an, Allah may Allah be pleased with him, he said, I am content by that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, took for himself and that is Al-Khumus, one-fifth. So he back with one-fifth, and therefore, <coughs> some of the scholars, rahimahumullah, said, it is recommendable to back with one-fifth of a person's wealth if he leaves too much of it after his death. From the benefits of this hadith, if the person does not have much and his hires are poor, then it is better that he doesn't or she doesn't back with anything. This is taken from, the, from this hadith where the Prophet ﷺ said, in fact, if you leave your hires rich, better than leave them in need of others, begging people. And so if you leave your hires well off, it is better than to leave them poor, begging people. And this is in contrast to what some of the common Muslims think, that it is a must to back with. This is wrong. So if some person does not have a lot of money and his wealth is only limited and his hires are poor, therefore he shouldn't back with. Some even of the common Muslims think that 
if the person does not back with, then he is not going to receive any reward. And it is not so. Rather, if he leaves the wealth for his hires, he is rewarded, even though the hires will take the wealth anyway. But if he takes by the guidance of the Prophet والسلام, in his saying, it is better to leave your hires well off than to leave them poor, begging people, then his reward in that is better than giving in charity any of his wealth. And from the benefits of this hadith is the fear of the companions who emigrated from Mecca to die in Mecca. Because Sa'd radiallahu ta'ala anhu in this hadith, if we can have that now, he said, أُخَلَّفُ بَعْدَ أَصْحَابِي Am I going to stay to live? Should I survive my companions? Meaning he disliked, may Allah be pleased with him, to survive them and die in Mecca. And he, knowing that he immigrated from it, and therefore it is concluded from this, that in everything that the person leaves for the sake of Allah, he should not then retract in that which he leaves for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. And it preceded in the explanation of the hadith earlier, the action done by some people when they got rid of the TV because they saw its evil exceeds its benefits. Then afterwards, then they came asking, should they use it again we say or we said since you got rid of it seeking the face of Allah then don't bring it back and from the benefits of this hadith that it tells of a miracle for the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam whereby he alayhi salatu wasalam said to Sa'd إِنَّكَ لَن تُخَلَّفَ وَسَوْفَ تُخَلَّفُ حَتَّى يَضُرُّ بِكَ أَقْوَامْ وَيَنْتَفِعُ بِكَ آخَرُونَ You will survive them, your survivor will be beneficial to people and harmful to others, the enemies of Islam and you will survive others till the people will derive benefit from you and others would be harmed by you and it occurred just as that he, Sa'ad bin Abi Waqas, survived till the time of Muawiyah and Umar and, and he, uh, till the time of Muawiyah, may Allah be pleased with him and lived long and this is from the signs of the Prophet والسلام, that he tells about something in the future and it occurs as he told however this is not a pure news rather expectation because he said La'allaka, it may be so he did not go firm but the matter turned as he expected والسلام, from the benefit of this hadith that any person who does something for the sake of Allah, for the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seeking the face except of Allah, except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will raise him to higher level in that. Even though he may be in a place where it is not permitted for him to stay. Because the action is something, and staying is something else. And that's why the preponderating opinion amongst the scholars, concerning the person who prays in a land taken by force his prayer is correct because the prohibition concerns taking by force the rights of others in this case the land 
So, so, so this is where the prohibition is focused. Not upon the Salah. So his Salah in this land, which is forbidden for him to take, is correct in itself. However, he is sinful in being in this place, taken in an only in an only uh, illegal way. And the Prophet ﷺ did not say, "Don't pray in a land taken in a forbidden way," or that if you pray in such a place, then your salah is nullified. He ﷺ did not say that. But take now the other situation. If you pray in a graveyard, then your salah is nullified. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, Al Ardu Kulluha Masjid Illa Al Maqbara Wal Hammam. The whole earth is a place of prayer except graveyards and public baths. Public baths. This is, of course, the funeral prayer is excluded because it is permissible to conduct it in the graveyard. We're talking about the salah, the five obligatory prayers and the related sunan. From the benefits of this hadith, if the person spends something for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seeking Allah's face, he is rewarded even if he spends upon his family, his wife, his children, including himself. If he seeks in that the face of Allah Azza wa Jal, he will be rewarded for it. And in this there is an indication that the person should have the intention of drawing nearer to Allah Azza wa Jal in everything that he spends in order to be rewarded. Everything. Little or much you spend upon yourself or your family or you give to your friends or to any people, any person. If you seek in that the face of Allah, then you will be rewarded for this. Then at the end of the hadith, at the end of the hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, لكن البائس سعد بن خولة At the end of the hadith, سعد بن خولة was unfortunate. The Messenger ﷺ lamented his death as he died in Mecca. Because he was from the immigrants who migrated from Mecca. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preordained for him to die in Mecca. And he died in there. So the Prophet ﷺ lamented his death because he died in Mecca. And they disliked for the immigrant to die in the land from which he migrated. This is the this concludes the explanation of this hadith and Imam al-Nawawi rahimahullah put it under this chapter of ikhlas of sincerity because the Prophet sallallahu said to him to Sa'ad innaka lan ta'amala amalan you will not do any action seeking by that the face of Allah except that Allah will raise you to a higher rank so this hadith therefore spoke of the intention behind spending that it should be for the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so the person can receive the rewards and be raised to higher levels. Wa alhamdulillah rabbil alameen wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. This brings therefore the end of this hadith. 
this great hadith of Sa'ad bin Abi Waqas, hadith number 6 from Riyadh al-Salihin. May Allah's mercy be upon Imam al-Nawawi and may Allah's mercy be upon our Shaykh. Walhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.